very privileged it is to maintain our representative who is neither the Lord or Lord of the Lord to us. Yeah. Better to us than we deserve. Yeah. As a matter of fact, no matter how good we are on our best days, we don't deserve our good days. Yeah. Amen. So every day we live, He's worth giving glory and praise and honor to Him. Just that good. He's not good because of what he does necessarily. He's good because that's just who he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if he doesn't do a good thing, that doesn't make him any less good. That's just the essence of God. And I know that uh, there's some witnesses in the house. Yeah. Of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, certainly, I'm, I'm, I'm very appreciative for this invitation and this grant of opportunity. Uh, by the angel of this house, Sam Bailey, for inviting me to come and to talk to the saints in this part of the vineyard. Bailey's doing a wonderful job. Here a lot of great things. He too comes from a great family, uh, a very reputable family, and we're just, uh, we're just glad that the Lord crossed our paths in this, in this, in this life. Uh, you know, uh, in the, in, in the hill country, uh, you know, uh, the mountains, you can see the mountains from, you see the mountains from off in the distance. Yeah. And uh, the interesting thing is the higher up the mountains get, the colder they get, and at the top of the mountains they have snow caps. And that snow has a tendency to melt down and uh, melt down to the bottom of the mountain. And, uh, and, it, and it causes a great pool of water. And that mountain uh, meets the valley by way of the water. And that's just wonderful to me that the mountain and the valley have come together. <laughs>
Uh, also on that number, and just bear with me as I uh, walk through these preliminaries, uh, I, I take pride in, again in uh, a group of young men who I believe the Lord has given me to train out 100 years ago. All the preachers used to carry young men with them and preach here and there and minister and exposing them to ministry and exposing them to the preaching and teaching of the word because God knows they're being exposed to so many other things. And uh, this is my typical class sitting right here in the front. All young men who have uh, uh, aspiration in some shape, form, or fashion to be in the, in, in the house of God. And so I, I'm glad to have them all here. Amen. Amen. And uh, uh, they all came and they're looking good. Amen. Amen. Sleep on tap. And wake up. Amen. Amen. I mean, uh, I mean, my kid folk at the Cedar Valley Church to keep me in prayer as uh, along and agree with us as the Mountain Church. And my family and I, this Tuesday, I will go in to serve you for the kidney transplant. Yeah. Never been here before, but uh, one thing that has been consistent of all the inconsistency of sickness, and that is God has been consistent. Trust me, I'll never be a new person. I never promise you'll never hurt. He said, I'll never leave you. I never promise you'll never be in pain and never feel under the weather and never feel bothered and never be down at times. But he said, I'll never leave you. And that's enough to satisfy in the midst of all of that other stuff. The fact that no matter what doctors are in the room, Dr. Jesus is only the number. Yes, Amen. 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 Somebody ought to give God some glory. I'm not going to preach long because I know it's Wednesday night and uh, tomorrow's Thursday. <laughs> so come with me uh, to a very familiar passage of Scripture. This has become one of my favorite that I like to delve into. Uh, Luke, the Gospel of Luke, third Gospel, uh, chapter 14. Verse 23. I want to hit a couple of high points. Um, uh, your, your man of God, the angel of this house, has great ambitions for this church. And uh, anytime a man of God no longer has ambitions for the people of God, uh, godly ambition, then that church is in trouble. And that's not the case with the Sea Valley Church. Uh, Brother Bailey has great godly ambitions for this congregation. Historically, the men of God has always have always had great ambitions for the people of God, and usually the people of God, uh, usually the people of God eventually catch on to those ambitions. But it takes a little longer. Uh, the front of the bus is easier to steer than the back of the bus. Amen. And at, but, but as long as we're on the bus, we'll get there together. And so we're going to look at some principles from this block of text about what Jesus says uh, about discipleship. Very uh, familiar passage of scripture to many of us. The Bible says, beginning at verse, how many Bibles? Raise your Bible in the air and wave them like you just a child of God and know the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. Okay. That gets people all the time. So I'm like, just a moment. Oh, 
much of you intending to build a tower set it not down first and count the cost whether he has sufficient to finish it. Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it began to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulted whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? <clears throat> or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassador and desireth the condition of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. I want to talk about uh, true committed discipleship here from this block of text. The church is in a dilemma today, and the dilemma that the church is in, this modern church is in, is that we have, in a lot of points, and I'm not talking about any particular congregation, I'm talking about the Church of Christ in general, has seeped and been lulled into a half cock commitment that says that the sum total of a church's existence is on Sunday and on Wednesday. Okay. Almost beyond our notice, almost inadvertently, we have been lulled by society, lulled by the cares of life, lulled by all the things taking place in our lives into making the church and compartmentalizing God and everything that has to do with God within the four walls of a sanctuary. Oftentimes, uh, we, uh, it, it even comes out in the pores of our jargon. Sometimes we're talking and being playful with one another and somebody does something that's questionable. Somebody says, somebody might say jokingly, well, you better repent on Sunday. Has anyone ever heard that? Yeah. Oh, Sunday, you better repent. Yeah. It's because psychologically we have compartmentalized church and religiosity and things pertaining to the kingdom. We have put it in a two-day-a-week compartment. Almost as if, apart and divorced from those two days, God's hand is not as much in our lives as we allow his hand to be within the four walls of the sanctuary.
enter the city. He's walking and there are crowds. Yeah. Not a crowd. Yeah. Crowds. Yeah. Y'all see that in the text? Yeah. Verse 25. Multitudes. Gather behind him. And, then, and so what he does is he turns. He just said everybody's welcome to come in, right? But look what he says now. If any man come to me, you see that? And hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Man, you got to check what's going on now. He just gave the parable about everybody coming in. He's got the crowd. He's got the number.
And Jesus didn't just want anybody sick. Because the quality of the sinner determines the quality of the sick one. Y'all yeah, yeah, follow me? Well, that's good. But what does that have to do with us? The premise, you know, I often say sometimes easy come, easy go. You know, I, I used to be bothered by people who try to teach and teach. 